Lord, everyone, God is so good and his mercy endures forever. I bless God on this Mother's Day weekend because he is a wonderful Savior. He is a fabulous God and I give him praise. A great God deserves a great praise. He alone has done great and mighty things. So I bless my father today. You know, I bless him because he's been good to me. His word says we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. We started this series in the book of Proverbs the sixth chapter talking about the six things that the Lord hates. Seven that were an abomination unto him. And there are six videos out already. This is the seventh video and this will conclude the series. We're going to talk about one that soweth discord among the brethren or among the family. So let's just get right into it. Over in the book of Proverbs, the sixth chapter, I'm going to begin reading in your hearing from the 16th through the 19th verse. The word of God says, these six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devises wicked imagination, feet that be swift and run into mischief. And verse 19 says, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity again to minister your word to your people, Father. I pray and I ask in the name of Jesus that your word would go forth in clarity, Father. I pray there be no distraction, so I bind that devil right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray, God, that you lead me by your spirit so that your people, my Lord, would be edified and you would be glorified. So, Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, I ask that they would be acceptable in your sight. I pray and I ask these things in the precious name of your son, Jesus. And so the word of God says, Solomon said, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Solomon, the wisest man in that the Bible says, one of the wisest men that men that have ever lived wrote this in the sixth chapter of Proverbs. And I like how, you know, he, he walked us through the six things that the Lord hates because it's important to know if you are in a relationship with someone, it is important to know those things that get on, you know, that they dislike so that, you know, you can avoid them. And all of these things, I see why our father would not, you know, would use such strong words for these six things, these seven things. You know, he hates them. And it's because they have the potential to destroy the life of one of his children. They have the potential to break up a family. And so our God is a God that loves the family. And so that's why he attacked this thing. You know, he used Solomon to pen this, to write this, to let us know, you know, those things that did, that brings him displeasure. And so Solomon said, um, he that soweth discord among the brother. And that word soweth, it means to, um, to send out. It means to spread. It means to let go, to stretch out. So in other words, to spread something. And you know, that's how when uh, a person that is, you know, full of lies and then, you know, they, they got all those lies. Now they're going to take it and tell those lies to others. And so that person begins to, you know, spread the lies, which causes, um, other people to judge an another person. They judge them unfairly without having all of the facts. You know, it's just a one-sided story. You have to be careful when someone is coming to you with a one-sided story. You need to know the whole story, not just his side of the story. And that gives that person the opportunity to uh, cause the person that's listening to to feel the same way as he feels, you know, with their convincing lies. And it also imposes that person that's carrying around lying and sowing discord, you know, they're carrying around those lies. They're imposing other people to feel the same way that they do. You know, they're causing sickness amongst the body. And, you know, when I thought about that, I thought about cancer. You know, when cancer is detected in the body, when you go to the doctor and the doctor detects cancer, they began to eradicate that cancer real quickly. They'll begin to te uh, treat it with chemotherapy. They'll treat it with radiation, you know, because they want to kill that thing because if cancer spreads throughout your body, throughout the other organs, it has the potential, number one, to kill the other organs outside of you, cause them to become diseased and not function properly. And then ultimately, the person that is full of cancer in their body is going to succumb. You know, they're going to die. And so that's why the doctors, 
they don't play with cancer. They don't, and they don't leave it alone either. They don't ignore cancer because they know that if they leave, if it's left alone, it has the potential to take that person out. You know, I was thinking also about over in the book of Genesis, the third chapter and the 22nd and the 23rd verse. You know, I was reading how, or reminded how, you know, when Adam had brought sin into the world because Adam disobeyed God and he disobeyed God by taking fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And there came a point where God had to step in and shut something down before Adam took the next step. So let's read what the Bible says, how God, you know, eradicated something. He shut it down before it had the potential to hurt others, you know, even more. And so let's read over in, um, the book of Genesis, if you would turn to the third chapter, I'm going to read in your hearing the 22nd and the 23rd verse. The word of God says, and the Lord God said, behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put his forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. The Lord banished Adam and Eve from the garden because if they disobeyed him and ate from the tree of life, I mean the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and here was the tree of life in the middle of the garden. You know, if Adam would have taken from the tree of life and eaten that fruit from there and lived in that sinful state forever, you know, that would have affected so many people. And God being the loving God that he is, he had to shut that thing down. He shut it down. He shut that garden down and put Adam and Eve out of it before it had the potential to affect, affect other people. And so because we serve a God that is, you know, a loving God. We serve a God that's a family man. He not only looks after, you know, just one, he looks after us all. And that word, um, you know, over in um, Proverbs, the sixth chapter, where he says he sowed discord among the brethren, that word discord means to sow strife and contention and anger, you know. And so who does that. You know, it's the enemy that does that. The enemy that was right there in the garden in the beginning, you know, trying to stir things up, trying to ruin mankind. And ultimately, if Adam had taken from that tree of life and lived in that sinful state forever, mankind would have been in trouble. So I praise God today. I praise God for our God, Hamdad Abakaya, who is a God that loves family, who looks after not just one, but he looks after us all. Because over in John 3, 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have eternal life. He didn't just stop at one. He loves the whole world. He said he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to salvation number um, salvation knowledge. That's the kind of God that we serve. He's a family God on this Mother's Day weekend. You know, we can take a lesson after him. Hallelujah. Because he covered our sins. He didn't leave us in a sinful state. And he protected us in that garden when, when Adam had the potential to do even further more harm by taking from the tree of life and being in that state forever. And we have to be like that. We have to be like our father, you know, in heaven. When when those come to us that want to, you know, spread lies and, and sow discord among the brethren, you have to shut that thing down in the name of Jesus. You have to tell, you know, and you know why you shut it down? A real quick way for those of you who don't know, a real quick way to shut it down is just say, okay, you know, let's stop. Let's pray for that person. That'll shut it down real quick, you know, because if you don't shut it down, what's going to happen? You're not going to take it and pray for it. You know, what's going to happen is, you know, the devil going to begin to whisper and then you're going to walk it over to somebody else, you know, it's going to begin to spread. You're going to tell somebody else and they're going to tell somebody else and it's going to be like a cancer, you know, flowing through the body, you know, assassinating someone character who probably don't even know that you're talking about them behind their back. The Bible says if you have a problem with someone, take two elders or two leadership and go to the person that you have a problem with, you know, and sit down and reason with them and talk to them about it. You know, like Jesus, God had a problem with us. He did. He had a problem with our sin, but him being the loving God that he is, hallelujah, he's sent his only begotten son.
son to cover that sin. You know, he could have, he could have, you know, wrath, his wrath could have come out upon us because we were in um, sin and sin brings about death. He could have left us, left us in our pitiful state, but a loving God who is a family God, hallelujah, who loves the family, you know, gave his only, his only begotten son to cover that sin. And so I would just challenge you Christians, you brothers and sisters in Christ, when someone is coming to you with gossip, when someone is sowing discord among the brethren, I challenge you to shut it down. Don't let them talk about the man of God. You know, even in the Old Testament, if you read some of the Old Testament accounts where they were talking about men and women, you know, even Moses, when his sister and another person were talking about him, the Lord struck him with leprosy. You don't talk about the men and women of God. You don't allow that in your hearing. You know, shut it down, I would encourage you to do. And so I want to leave you with a scripture found in the book of Proverbs. It is the 10th chapter and the 12th verse. And so as we conclude this series on Mother's Day weekend, you know, we serve a God that loves family. That's what it's all about. We serve a loving God. And so because he loves his family, you you know, he's a good God. He's a great God. He's an awesome father. You know, he knows how to take care of his children. He protects us and he shields us and he helps us. And so we have to be like our father. We have to be more like God, more of a loving and covering sin instead of taking it and running with it and sowing discord, being just like the one that started it with you. Shut it down. And so over in Proverbs, again, the 10th chapter, the 12th verse, The word of God says, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sin. And I bless God today that we're ending with this series right on Mother's Day when we're thinking about family, we're thinking about mother, we're thinking about a mother that, you know, God uses to hold the family together. You know, they're supporting her husband, taking care of the household, you know, doing those things that help the family to run smoothly. I bless God for mothers. I bless them for their love, for how they raise their children. And I bless God, you know, for his word, for instructing us and helping us to see, you know, how we are supposed to behave, how we are supposed to conduct ourselves as men and women of God, as representatives of the most high God, as children of the most high God. You know, that comes with a calling that comes with a way of carrying ourselves. We are made in his image. We are to be like our God. And so the one that stirs up hatred strife. We know who that is. That's the devil because the Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. The Bible says that he's the father of lies, but our heavenly father, who is the great I am, he showed us how to do this thing. He said, love covers sin. Hallelujah. So he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, and he covered all of our sins. And so we are challenged today to be like our father and walk in love. That's all he commanded us to do. And that's how, you know, I'm so glad that he ended the series, you know, with this, with this verse. He ended this little series with this verse because love is the key. If you love your brother, then you're not going to do those things. You're not going to be prideful against, you know, as it talks about over in Proverbs 6. You're not going to be prideful, walk around with a proud look trying to hurt your brother. You're not going to lie on your brothers and sisters. You're not going to shed. You will not shed innocent blood if you love, you know, if you have that pure pure love in your heart. You have the love of God in your heart. You're not going to devise wicked plans. You're not going to run to evil. You know, your feet is not going to be running to evil, but you're going to be one that's ready to build, run to build somebody else. The Bible says those that are, are, are spiritual are to restore those that are weaker. So you're going to run to restore. You're not going to allow tail barrels to be speaking gossip in your ears and spreading discord among the brethren. You're going to Shut it down and, you know, pray. You shut it down and tell them, let's pray for that person. And then challenge them to do what the Bible says and go take their, their problem to the person that actually offended them. They should not be talking to you about a problem unless you're a leader or unless they're wanting to use you to go with them to another person. But if they have not talk to the person they had a problem with, they should not be talking to you. And so you got to shut it down. Higher, higher. You got to shut it down. And so again, if you love someone, you're not going to be a false witness against them. You, a 
against them. You're not going to commit perjury and then you're not going to sow discord. You're not going to break the family up. That's what it does. That's what the enemy's desire is, people. His desire is to tear down the body of Christ. If the body is cancerous in, in one part, you know, it has the potential to spread to all the body of Christ. So we have to come together as one and we have to eradicate, you know, hallelujah, eradicate the sicknesses that have crept in to the church and get them out of there. Shut them down, you know, so that God's spirit can flow a healthy body. You know, God's spirit can flow through the body and we can do this thing that God has called us to do. You know, God wants to do great things through the body of Christ. There's so much to be done. You know, there's so much that has already been done, but there's so much to can still be done. There's so many moves of God that can take place if we get ourselves ready. You know, and it starts with being on one of Court, so we have to shut down anything that looks like the devil. And so protect the family today. Protect the family. You know, don't allow anything to filter through you. Protect the, the, the body of Christ today and shut it. I can't say that enough. Shut it down. And we have to walk in in love. If we get nothing else from this series, if we learn nothing else from the six things that the Lord hates, the one major thing is he loves love. And so he's a God of love. And if we walk in love, he said, love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. If we love, then we won't do those things that hurt our brothers and sisters. And so I just want to give someone the opportunity today. If you have not become far part of this um, family of God already, I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord today. The Bible says over in Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th verse, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says that you will be saved. And it says in Romans also, if you call on the name of Jesus, you will be saved as well. So I want to give you that opportunity. I pray that if you have not uh, surrendered your life to the Lord, you would follow me in this prayer. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. Please forgive me for the wrong that I have done. I denounce the devil. I declare that Jesus is Lord, that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. So I call on the name of Jesus to save me today, to be my Lord and Savior. And now that I am your child, I pray you fill me with your precious Holy Spirit so that I might have the power I need to love like God loves. I pray and I ask this in the precious name of Jesus. And if you have said that prayer, welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah. Jesus loves you and he died for you and he died for this very moment that you would give your life to him. So I praise God for you today. What what I would instruct you to do, pray and ask the Lord to lead you, lead you to a Bible believing, you know, believes that Jesus Christ is the only way, he's the truth and the life, and also one that's being led by the Spirit. Pray and ask the Lord to lead you to that type of fellowship. When you get there, let the man of God know that you just gave your life to the Lord. He'll, he'll point you to the leadership in the church, and they'll begin to shepherd you, and they'll help you to grow, and they'll teach you about the things of God to help you, you know, to be able to stand on your own feet. And I always tell new converts, you know, don't just wait for the Tuesday night Bible studies or the Tuesday when they do the leadership um, Bible studies and for the people that have just given their life to the Lord. No, you on your own. In the meantime, in between time, it's a daily thing. We walk with the Lord seven days a week. So read your Bible every day and pray so that you can grow stronger. So you can actually probably be a blessing when you go to those little studies. You already have some word in you and you can begin to be a blessing to others. And for Christians, you know, it's all about love. As we conclude this Mother's Day weekend with this series, I want to say happy Mother's Day to everyone. I pray that your children blessed you real good. I pray you received everything that your heart desired. And I pray, you know, that your children would just continue to be a blessing to you. And not only that they would continue, that they would rise up and call you 
blessed. And for Christians today, we have to walk, you know, just walk in love and, and, and just, you know, when those, when we are presented with the opportunity to either listen and become judgmental and, you know, become what the liar is trying to impose on us, you know, become judges of the other people without hearing both sides of the story, or we can shut it down and walk in love, pray for the person, and send that other person pack and tell them to go talk to that person before they begin to spread lies about that person. So I pray you were blessed by the series. I pray that God would continue to keep his hands upon you. I pray you would grow stronger in the knowledge of God and that you too would be a blessing to others. Remember the lost souls out there that do not have Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Remember to take them to the Bible studies, take them to church, you know, help them to become closer to the Lord in these days that we are living in. So again, God bless you for listening to the video. I pray that he would just keep his hands upon you until we meet again. And as I always say, God loves you and I love you too. And keep your eyes on Jesus. God bless you.